So far, we have talked about mass as the amount of matter in an object. But in physics, we can use Newton's second law of motion, net force equals to ma, to define mass as the net force on an object divided by the acceleration of the object, which means that mass is a measure of the object's inertia. With the same net force on an object, the larger the mass, or inertia, the smaller its acceleration, and the harder it is to change the object's velocity or the object's state of motion. We have also learned about Newton's law of gravitation, the gravitational force equals to big G times mm over r squared, which also equals to mg, the weight of the object. If we cancel the little m, we get this little g, which equals to big G times big M over r squared. The little g is called the gravitational field, or the acceleration due to gravity. This equation tells us that the bigger the mass of an object, the stronger the gravitational force the object can experience from another object, or the stronger the gravitational force it can exert on another object. Here's the puzzle. How come the property that determines how an object accelerates in response to forces also determines the strength of the gravitational attractive force between objects? They don't seem to be the same properties. So, when we define mass using Newton's second law, we call this mass the inertial mass. When we use Newton's law of gravitation to define mass, we call this mass the gravitational mass. As far as physicists can tell, those two kinds of mass are precisely equal to each other. If we can treat these two kinds of mass as the same thing, it means there must be a fundamental connection between motion and gravitation. This connection is called the equivalence principle in Einstein's general relativity. Let's consider a person standing inside a spaceship that is at rest on the surface of the Earth. His feet will be on the floor because the gravitational force between him and the Earth pulls down on him. Now see if you can find the person's apparent weight. If I draw the force diagram for the person, I would have mg, the gravitational force, and the normal force from the floor acting on the person. Because the acceleration is zero, that means the upward and downward forces, they must be equal so they can cancel. So the normal force equals to mg on the surface of the Earth, the g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is the normal force acting on the person. It is also the apparent weight, how heavy the person feels he is. Now let's consider the same person inside the same spaceship. But this time the spaceship is at rest in a location in space that is very, very far from any planets, the sun, or stars. He would float in the spaceship because there is no gravitational force to keep his feet down on the floor. Then let's imagine that we turn on the rocket engine. So the rocket accelerates that way at the rate of 9.8 meters per second squared the person's feet would be on the floor. Now see if you can find the person's apparent weight. If I draw the force diagram of the person, there would not be any mg, because he is far, far away from all planets and stars. But he is touching the floor, so the floor gives him this normal force. If I write the net force equals to ma, the net force would just be the normal force, which equals to his mass times the acceleration 9.8. So the normal force the floor pushes on him is his mass times 9.8. That is also how hard he pushes on the floor, because the, the normal force on him and the normal force on the floor, they are a pair of action force and reaction force. So this is also how heavy he feels he is. This is his apparent weight. In both of these scenarios, the normal forces are the same. The person has the same apparent weight. He pushes on the floor exactly the same way. This means that the effect of gravity feels just like the effect of 
acceleration. If the person inside the spaceship cannot see, hear, or perceive anything from outside the spaceship, the person would not be able to tell one scenario from the other. That is basically the equivalence principle, which means gravitational mass is equivalent to inertial mass. And so far, no experiments have shown any measurable difference between the two. If we let an object go into free fall, mg would be the net force on the object, and net force equals to ma, the two same m's cancel, so the little g equals to acceleration a, the little g is the gravitational field, it is also the acceleration due to gravity.